Now we will talk about the concept of linear momentum and the special case of collisions in one dimension. Okay, so first of all, we define the linear momentum of a particle or a system of particles as a vector quantity. It's the product of the mass multiplied with the velocity. So for a particle, this would be the particle mass. For a system of particles, this would be the total mass multiplied with total velocity. So as you can see, the SI unit of linear momentum is kilograms meters per second. Now, when we have a system of particles and we look at the net external force acting on the system. So why do I distinguish between external and internal? Well, there might be forces acting in between the particles. Those are uh, mutual forces. But what matters is the net external force that we apply to the system. And this must be equal to mass times acceleration. Now, acceleration by definition is the rate of change of velocity, m dv dt. So that is the rate of change of mv because m is a constant. It doesn't depend on time. Then we find that the net external force acting on a system is the rate of change of the linear momentum of the system. F net external is equal to dp dt. So when the net external force acting on a system is zero, we will have dp dt equals to zero. That means linear momentum does not change with time or the linear momentum is a conserved quantity. Delta p is equal to zero. So linear momentum is conserved. This is what we call an isolated system. The system is isolated in terms of the external force acting on it. In that case, we have conservation of linear momentum. Now, we can have two types of collisions between particles. We have elastic collisions and inelastic collisions. An elastic collision between two objects is one in which both linear momentum and total kinetic energy is conserved. So we must have delta P is equal to zero. That means the net external force acting on the system is zero and the, rate, the change in kinetic energy is zero. So we find that there is no change in the kinetic energy of the system. And uh, that, that is energy conservation. So that means the system uh, will evolve in such a way that the linear momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is conserved. A good example is the collusion between billiard balls. Well, the collision between billiard balls can only be approximately elastic. So if we ignore uh, effects such as uh, friction with uh, air, etc., uh, we still have a sound of the collision. That means there's an ac acoustic energy loss. So strictly speaking, we cannot have uh, exactly kinetic energy conservation. So uh, it would be approximately elastic collision. An inelastic collusion is one in which momentum is conserved, but kinetic energy is not conserved. So we have net external force acting on the system equals zero, so that delta P is equal to zero, but delta K is non-zero. A good example is a perfectly inelastic collusion. That's the one in which we have two particles moving towards each other. M1, mass M1, velocity, initial velocity V1 initial, moving towards M2, with velocity v2 initial and when these particles collide they stick together the total mass has a final velocity now in a situation like this when a particle gets embedded in another particle or they they stick together they glue together that means we have friction in between the two particles and uh, that means we have non-conservative forces in action so that the kinetic energy in this uh, situation cannot be conserved. However, since for this uh, system of two particles there is no external force acting on these particles or the net external force is zero, we have linear momentum conservation. So M1, V1 initial, the initial momentum of M1, M2, V2 initial, the initial momentum of M2 will add up to the final momentum, M1 plus M2, 
the common velocity v final. So we find that the common velocity will be m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial divided by m1 plus m2. Now these one-dimensional uh, collusions, uh, we also call them head-on collusions. Uh, in this case, when we talk about an elastic head-on collusion, uh, we're going to have both kinetic energy conservation and linear momentum conservation. So M1V1 initial is the initial momentum of M1, M2V2 initial is the initial momentum of M2. The system is isolated in terms of external forces, external force is zero. So we have M1 moving with V1 final, M2 moving with V2 final right after the collusion. So if we write momentum conservation, M1V1 initial plus M2V2 initial is M1V1 final plus M2V2 final. And if we write kinetic energy conservation, since we don't have any uh, friction in action, any non-conservative forces in action, kinetic energy is conserved. 1 half M1V1 initial square initial kinetic energy of M1 plus 1 half M2V2 initial square initial kinetic energy of M2 must equal the fi total final kinetic energy 1 half M1V final V1 final square plus 1 half M2V2 final square. Now these 1 halves will cancel and if we uh, take this V1 final square to the left hand side, we will have M1 V1 initial square minus V1 final square is M2 V2 final square minus V2 initial square. So we can write this also as M1 V1 initial minus V1 final, that product with V1 initial plus V1 final, M2 V2 final minus V2 initial, that product V2 final plus B2 initial. So A square minus B square is A minus B times A plus B. And from momentum conservation, we have M1 V1 initial minus M1 V1 final is equal to M2 V2 final minus M2 V2 initial. So these two terms are equal. So they will cancel and we will find V1 initial plus V1 final should be equal to V2 initial plus V2 final. Or we can write this as V1 initial minus V2 initial is minus parentheses V1 final minus V2 final. So uh, basically the momentum conservation equation and this equation that we obtain using combination of momentum conservation and kinetic energy conservation can be used for only head-on collisions where we have one dimensional uh, collusion. So this has to be a head-on collusion. Now assuming that we know the initial velocities v1 initial and v2 initial are known, now we can isolate v2 final from this equation. v2 final equals v1 initial plus v1 final minus v2 initial. And we can also write the linear momentum conservation m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial m1 v1 final plus m2 instead of v2 final we write v1 initial plus v1 final minus v2 initial so if i rearrange this m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial equals v1 final parentheses m1 plus m2 uh, m2 v1 initial and minus m2 v2 initial so uh, I can isolate V1 final here. This would be M1 V1 initial minus M2 V2 initial divided by M1 plus M2 plus M2 V2 initial. This taken to the left hand side gives me another M2 V2 initial. 2 M2 V2 initial divided by M1 plus M2. This is V1 final. So as you can see, if I know the initial velocities V1 initial and V2 initial, then I can calculate V1 final. Similarly, I can write for V2 final, V1 initial plus V1 final minus V2 initial. So for V1 final, I will substitute this result. V1 initial minus V2 initial plus V1 final, which is um, so this can be written as um, 1 plus, because I have V1 initial 
plus uh, m1 minus m2 over m1 plus m2 v1 initial v1 initial parentheses 1 plus m1 minus m2 over m1 plus m2 and then i have minus v2 initial 2m2 over m1 plus m2 minus 1 v2 initial so you can see m1 plus m2 plus m1 minus m2 will give me 2m1 if i have the common denominator m1 plus m2 and 2m2 minus m1 minus m2 will give me m2 minus m1 over m1 plus m2 v2 initial so v2 final can also be written in terms of v1 initial and v2 initial as 2m1 over m1 plus m2 v1 initial plus m2 minus m1 over m1 plus m2 v2 initial so these results are valid for head-on elastic collisions no need to memorize them we can easily get the same results uh, using uh, these two this equation and also linear momentum uh, conservation in the one-dimensional collision case now, as a special case, if I have a heavy particle colliding with a light one head-on initially at rest. Okay, so what is the situation? I have heavy particle M1 much greater than the light particle M2. And V2 initially is zero. The light particle is initially at rest. So if I uh, substitute these results in my v1 final and v2 final formulas m1 minus m2 over m1 plus m2 v1 initial now m2 is much less than m1 therefore it can be ignored uh, so we obtain m1 over m1 so we will find v1 initial and 2m2 over m1 plus m2 now m2 is much less than m1 so we, i can neglect it 2m2 over m1 will approach zero as m1 goes to infinity so this term doesn't have any contribution v1 final will be equal to v1 initial and v2 final 2m1 over m1 plus m2 m2 can be ignored because it's much less than m1 so i will have 2m1 over m1 which is 2 so 2v1 initial and m2 minus m1 over m1 plus m2 m2 can be neglected m2 minus m1 divided by m1 as m1 goes to infinity will approach zero so uh, also this is this can be zero but i also have v2 initial equals to zero here so i can substitute v2 initial equals to zero so in this case basically v1 final becomes v1 initial v2 final becomes 2v1 initial so when a heavy particle collides with a light particle head-on initially at rest uh, we find that the speed of the heavy particle doesn't change v1 final equals v1 initial however the light particle will have twice the velocity of the heavy particle it will move with 2v1 initial now another scenario if i have a light particle colliding with a heavy particle head-on initially at rest so now m2 is much greater than m1 uh, and uh, v2 initial is equal to zero so uh, if i look at my formulas now i'm going to neglect m1 instead of m2 because m1 is approaching zero so i will have minus m2 over m2 which is minus v1 initial v2 initial is zero so this term is zero and so v1 final is minus v1 initial the light particle collides with the heavy particle reflects with the same velocity in opposite uh, the same speed in opposite direction v2 final is 2m1 over m1 plus m2 m1 is approaching zero so this is neglected and v2 initial is zero this is uh, zero so v2 final is zero so what do we find when the light particle collides with the heavy particle at rest it reverses its velocity and the heavy particle remains at rest so uh, the, for these elastic collisions we find that uh, we have for head-on elastic collisions two special cases heavy particle colliding with a light particle at rest does not change its velocity the light particle gains twice the velocity of the heavy particle the light particle colliding with the heavy particle at rest the light particle reflects it reverses its velocity the same speed in opposite direction and the heavy particle does not move so this is of course uh, in the limit the heavy particle is very heavy the light particle is very light so to summarize uh, 
we have introduced the concept of linear momentum, which is mass times velocity measured in kilograms meters per second. This is a conserved quantity when the system is isolated in terms of external forces, because that would imply using second law of thermodynamics, dp dt equals zero. An elastic collision is one in which we have kinetic energy and linear momentum conservation. In elastic collision, where we have no kinetic energy conservation, but linear momentum conservation. That's because in inelastic collisions, uh, friction is in action. We have non-conservative forces. Uh, we have seen a perfectly inelastic collision. If you write the linear momentum conservation, basically knowing the initial velocities of the two particles, you can find the final velocity. If we have an elastic head-on collision, we have seen that writing kinetic energy conservation and linear momentum conservation, we find a relationship between initial and final velocities. V1 initial plus V1 final equals V2 initial plus V2 final which allows us to write v1 final and v2 final in terms of the initial velocities and uh, as special cases we talked about heavy particle colliding with a light particle head-on initially at rest and a light particle colliding with a part heavy particle head-on initially at rest.